prostitution be happening in the temple of God? And he said, no, that shouldn't be the case. Why? Because your body is the temple of the Lord. So there should be no room for any kind of prostitution. So we're talking about sexual immorality when we talk about your body as a temple. We're not talking about earrings. We're not talking about none of that type of stuff. Because if, if we're going to talk about that, we need to stop eating Big Macs, stop eating French fries, fried chicken, if we're going to say that's what it means when the body is a temple. It's, it's, it's a sexual immorality issue. Now, the other verse when it comes to tattoos is... Leviticus um, 28. You shall not make any cuts on your body for the dead or tattoo yourselves. Why? I am the Lord. Now, in terms of making cuts on the flesh or tattoos, it says, cut your body for the dead or tattoo yourselves. Now, first of all, it says, for the dead or tattoo yourselves. Now, why would he say this? Because in this period of time, um, the pagan practice was to bleed yourself and mark yourself up in worship of the dead. So it was to, I'm going to mark myself up so that the dead can, can receive worship. I'm going to suffer. It was a way of mourning for people. Like, I'm going to suffer because you died. And I'm going to mark myself up in, in, in worship of you, in honor of you. And God, was, and, and God is saying, stop these pagan practices. Stop. You're trying to worship like they worship. Stop it. Because ultimately you're going to end up um, mastered by them. Right? So they're, they're going to end, you're going to end up being living under them. And, and living out what they live, worshiping who they worship, right? So he's telling them to stop this. So when we're talking about worship of the dead, we're talking about something completely different than, than just randomly marking on your body, you know what I'm saying? Which you would say common sense-wise, like, why would you even want to do that? That's what I would say to my kids. They're like, I want a tattoo. I'd be like, first of all, why? Why do you want to mark up your body with a bunch of ink? Like, like logically, why do you want to do that? Um, so if he doesn't have any real convictions for that, or he doesn't feel like, I don't know, I just think it's cool, then I'll say, no, you probably don't need to do it, because you can't get rid of it. <laughs> or you can pay, but I'll be like, um, if you just want some style, a little flair, I probably wouldn't do that, right? Now, if he comes to me, Dad, I'm just really fully convicted, I just, I feel like this is a great way for me to honor the Lord, I'm an urban missionary, I'm, you know, so on and so forth, man, I'm just, I, it just demonstrates for me just my compassion, my commitment to the Lord Jesus, and so on and so forth, or I just like art. I'm very passionate about art. I feel like God has wired me to demonstrate His glory through art and artwork, and I'm just passionate about it. I don't worship it, but you know, for me, it's just a great way to articulate His glory and His goodness in art. The same way a pianist would say, I just want to sit and write, compose beautiful songs. Then, hey, then you do what you do. You're free to do that. Um, you're not more or less a Christian because of that. Um, you know, I'm not telling people to run out and go get them. I think people shouldn't, in this day and age, everyone's getting them because it's, it's trendy. You know what I'm saying? It's so there are many, many people nowadays who have printed the mark of the self-expression, the mark of their religious beliefs or affiliation, and you have men like Lecrae who, who exists within the, the, the realm of Christendom on some level and he's saying that the scriptures that pertain to tattooing your body don't apply or can't apply if you view them from their original context. What is the tattoo? Where did it originate? According to the Britannica Encyclopedia, a tattoo is defined as a permanent mark or design made on the body by pigment introduced through ruptures in the skin, ruptures through the skin. The term is also loosely applied to the inducement of scars. Tattooing has been practiced in most parts of the world and examples have been found on Egyptian and Nubian mummies dating from 2000, of course 2000 uh, BC. Decoration is perhaps the most common motive, though designs may also serve to identify rank, status, or membership, and are thought by some to provide magical protection against sickness or misfortune. The word comes from Tahiti, where it was recorded by James Cook's expedition in 1769. The first electric tattooing implement was patented in the U.S. in 18, 
91. And so, according to this information that we have available to us, tattooing has been something practiced by many, many cultures over many, many years. What you do not see is tattooing practiced by the people God called out for himself. You do not see tattooing or the intentional marking or scarring of the skin done by the children of Israel. And we know that the word of God, even though we're not under the old covenant law, we know that the word of God was was written for our example, even in the Old Covenant. New Testament, we have the instruction from the apostles and the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we follow that because we want to know how to please the Lord. But then, of course, you have the Old Covenant, and much of what's in, under the Old Covenant no longer applies to the New Covenant believer. And the reason why we would say that is because we know that the Old Covenant was written to the Jewish people, most of us who are modern day believers are not Jewish. And so that wouldn't have applied to us as a law anyway. But the reality is that God displayed his ways and his works through and to the children of Israel. And he displayed those works through that nation unto the whole world. And so we can use the Old Covenant as an example. And many of the, the words, the statements, the scriptures that are in the Old Covenant are still applicable in their principle today even though we're not under that law. That stated, you can't just take the whole Old Covenant and count it all as worthless and you can't take it and explain away present principles and instructions that you and I as a believer or as, as potential believers should follow. Since intentional marking of the skin is not consistent, nor out of obedience to the Lord, then it is out of obedience to Satan. If we mark our skin as a practice or as a means of expression, and we didn't hear God tell us that we should do this, nor is the practice consistent with what the Lord established from before the fall of man, if we are not instructed by God to do this in his word, then doing so is not out of obedience to God, nor can be. It must needs be out of obedience to the devil. And serving the devil is what the word of God calls idolatry. Satan is the spirit that motivates world behavior. Ephesians 2 and 1 lets us know that it is Satan who is at work in the children of disobedience, the children that are of the world. And so we look at these images, we look at the, the Tahitian tattooing imagery, which is still popular today. We look at Lil Wayne, and, and so Lil Wayne is a messenger of the devil. Obviously, his messages don't lead people to Christ, but yet you have Lecrae, whose forearm is shown in the image, who's supposed to be, and who is a professed messenger of the Lord Jesus Christ, but he is not leading people to the nature of Christ, nor to the message of Christ, but rather leading people away from the nature and the message of Christ. Because we understand that you're not just a believer because of the lyrics that you supposedly promote or that you supposedly express. No, your whole life is a message. The culture that you intentionally adapt to, that is a message. Your decisions are sending messages. Jesus said, if you don't believe what I'm saying, believe what I'm doing. And so our entire lives, our entire lives are messages to people. The Word of God tells us that. Now, body mutilation or tattooing, which is all that it is, you're mutilating your body, it was only practiced by nations that served the devil and not God. 1 Corinthians 10, 19 to through 20 tell us this. It says that the things the Gentiles sacrificed, they didn't sacrifice to God. They sacrificed to the devil. And in verse 20 he says that we should not have fellowship or agreement with devils. And so if somebody is telling you it's okay to do what the fallen nations have been doing, they are messengers of the devil. Because the devil, according to Ephesians 2 and 1, is the spirit that is at work in the children of disobedience. He is the spirit that is operating through the course or through the agenda, through the 
fads and the direction of this world. Verse 21 of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 lets you and I know that we can't do both. We can't be lukewarm. We can't say that we're believers. We can't be authentically Christian and authentically hip-hop. We can't be authentically Christian and authentically rock. We can't be authentically Christian and, and authentically worldly because the devil is the spirit that works through the world while the Holy Spirit is the spirit that works through Christianity and through the Christian believer. Worship must be in the spirit and in truth. We know that the word of God represents and articulates truth from God. We also understand that when you do something in the spirit, it means that the flesh is not motivating you to do that. It is the spirit of God. And you're not going to know the spirit of God unless you are born again and God gives you his spirit. The word of God says if you don't have the spirit of God, you don't belong to him. It says that in Romans chapter 8. And so worship must be spirit led, not flesh led. So when you think about how we, how we worship God, we didn't invent that and we definitely didn't get it from the world. We got that from the Holy Ghost. If our worship is in spirit and in truth. And in John chapter 4, that's what Jesus said to this woman. He let her know that she didn't even know what she was worshiping because salvation came from the Jewish people. It came from those who were ordained of God to follow God. So salvation didn't come from the Gentile nations. So we can't go to the Gentile nations as a blueprint for how we should honor God. We have to go to the Hebrew scriptures and understand God from the perspective of those who were called and ordained to bear the image of the Lord our God. In verse 23 of John chapter 4, Jesus said, The hour comes and now is when those who worship the Father, the true worshipers, shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Because that is who God is looking to worship Him. Not people who are going to assimilate the world's culture and advocate the world's idolatry. So loving God, when you say you love God, when you, say, when you say you're convicted by God, when you say you're led by the Spirit of God, then what should manifest and what will manifest is your obedience to God's Word. If you say you love God and disobey the Word of God and do your own thing and justify it as God's Word, then the Word of God Himself, Jesus Christ, through his disciples and through his own words calls us liars. According to 1 John 2 verse 3 through 5 it says, We know that we know him when we obey his word. We obey his commandments. He that says I know him and does not obey his commands is a liar and there is no truth in it. The truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, whoever obeys the word of our Lord Jesus Christ, Whoever obeys him, not those who obey the world, those who obey Jesus, those are they that God has perfected his love within. And so you need to ask for God to perfect his love in you. Pure religion is what God wants you and I to manifest. Pure religion is serving those who cannot help themselves like the fatherless and the widows and also to live holy. So it's not just to do good works, it's also to live righteously before the Lord your God. James 1.27 says that, pure religion. There's nothing wrong with real religion, pure religion. Pure religion and undefiled. So we're talking about religion that is pure and holy. Before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless or the orphans and the widows in their poverty or in their affliction. And to keep yourself, to keep myself, to keep ourselves unspotted from the world. The world brought us marking of our vessels, but God didn't bring that to us. He used that to, to, to illustrate the curse. He used body mutilation as it related to the boring of the ear to illustrate enslavement, permanent enslavement. He, the, the, the genres that are in the world, that are communicating the world, that are communicating the soul, that are communicating that which God rejects and gave over to the devil to use against humanity. Those are the things that God wants us to keep ourselves from. 
in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13 through 16, it says that we should gird up or pull up the pants or gird up our belts, tighten the belts of our minds. He says, be sober. If you and I are governed by emotions, then we're not sober. And if we're not sober, then we cannot prove what is good, acceptable, or the perfect will of God. Unless you and I are holy, we cannot prove the will of God. We cannot lead in the kingdom of God. It says that we should hope to the end for God's grace, which will be, come, which will be manifest at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children. Not like Ephesians 2, 1 talks about disobedient children. No, as obedient children, not shaping yourselves not fashioning yourselves, not carving or, 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 or designing yourselves according to the old lusts, the old desires, the, the world of wickedness, according to that which God despises and according to that which God hates. God doesn't want us to bear the image of the world. That was what we used to like. If you still like that, then the word of God told us in John that the love of God is not in you. The truth of God is not in you. And you need to cry out to God that he might fill you with his love, fill you with his truth unto obedience because your faith will manifest obedience. Your, con your conviction in God will manifest. It will result in obedience. He says right there in verse 14, 1 Peter 1, 14. As obedient children, not fashioning or designing or shaping yourselves or molding yourselves according to the former lusts when you were ignorant. When you were ignorant, you did those things. But as he which has called you is holy, so be you holy in all manner of conversation. That's not talking about verbal conversation alone. It's talking about your entire life. He says, be holy in all manner of conversation because it is written. It is written. We don't use the word of God as, as, as a corrupt thing. We don't explain away the word of God. We do what God has commanded us to do because it is written, be holy because I, the Lord your God, am holy. That's why you and I aspire to holiness. The word of God lets you know, it lets me know that the whole world lies in wickedness. The whole world is a rebel. The whole world is unrighteous. Satan wants you to use his way to honor God because he knows that if you do that, God will reject you. Satan wants you to ascend for yourself. He wants you to promote yourself, promote your fallen way. He wants you to use that in the place of the Spirit of God. Because if you use the work of Christ, if you use the standard of Christ, then you'll have dominion. Jesus let us know that. He let us know that he casts out devils by the finger of God because the Spirit of God, the kingdom of God, has come to us. So how do you have dominion? It's by the Spirit of God. If you're not born again, if you've not repented of your sins and begun to follow Jesus, then you don't have power to overcome the spirit that is deceiving the whole world. There is a spirit that is deceiving the whole world that keeps the world in rebellion and in wickedness. But you can be delivered. I can be delivered from that by the power of the Holy Spirit. Look at what 1 John chapter 5, verse 19 lets you and I know. It says this, And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lies in wickedness. Talking about those who are born again, according to John 3, you must be born again. You must be baptized into Christ. You must be filled with His Holy Spirit. If you don't have the Spirit of God, you don't belong to God. And it says right there in verse 20 of First John 5, it says, And we know that the whole world lies in wickedness, and we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding. Peter says we should not walk like we used to walk in our ignorance. No, we should walk in understanding that we may know Him that is true. The Spirit of God has come to us in Christ so that we may know Him that is true, and we are in Him that is true. Even in His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. The world, the world, they follow idols. You must keep yourself by the power of this Son Spirit, the Spirit of the S-O-N, Jesus Christ. According to Psalms 2, it says, kiss Him. 
meaning to come to him in worship in an affectionate love, lest he be angry and you perish from the way. See, the kings of the world and the rulers, they set themselves against the Lord and against his anointed, and they try to cast off his cords. Let us break his bands from us. Let's cast away his cords. That's all that hip-hop is, whether you call it Christian or not. That's all that rock is, whether you call it Christian or not. That's all that all the stuff is. That's all that tattooing is. It comes from the devil. It comes from the world. That's all that the fashions of the world illustrate. It illustrates the image of the enemy. Jesus in John 17 prayed that you and I be kept from the evil. He said, I pray not that you take them from the world, but that you keep them from the evil. And that's what God wants for you. And that's what God wants for me.